Cosine, like this is this is great. It would be nice if x cubed times cos x's slope were three x squared times negative sine x. Wouldn't that be nice? It's not. It's not. It would be nice if x cubed over cos x's slope were 3x squared over negative sine x. That would be nice. That's not. Okay. Newton actually is going to hook us up, but not as much as you think he was. He took a generic form of a product plugged it into his marriage, his union, of the limit and the slope formula, and he discovered that the product rule is not as simple as just slopes times the slopes. It's a little bit more complicated. He discovered that a quotient rule is not as simple as just slopes divided by the slope. Okay? Now, I could show you the proof. We could go into it. We could spend time showing why this Slope of 3x plus 2 times the slope of negative 4x squared minus 3. Why, this is wrong. But honestly, I'm just going to tell you what is right, and we'll just go from there. Okay? So here is the product rule. If you have a function that is a product, of two things like with x's. So we'll say like x's and x's. I'll call it the first piece of the product and the second piece of the product. Okay? Newton discovered that if you have a product, the slopes of your product will be given by the slopes of the first. I'm going to put first prime. Again, this is a prime. It means the slopes of the first. It's not a one little tick mark, okay? Slopes of the first times the second plus the slopes of the second times the first. This is the product. Where does it come from? Newton took F times G, plugged it into the limit slash slope formula, developed this rule. What? No. So it's not it's not double the same thing because it's like first slopes times the second is not going to be the same as the second slopes times the first. So it's not like doubling something. You take in the slopes of the first times the second, slopes of the second times the first. Okay? Now what's going to happen is that, let's look at the guy on the left. You might get a slope equation that is going to be very long and seemingly crazy. So let's look at this guy on the left. We notice the first piece and the second piece. They both have x's, so we will use this rule. And it was just something that you're going to get used to doing. Maybe you write small. The slopes of this crazy product. Slopes are the slopes of the first times the second plus the slopes of the second 
times the first. Now, this is where everybody asks me, is that it? And I'll be like, uh, yes and no, depending, okay? Depending on what you got to do with it. If I ask you to find the slope of F at just a value, like X equals 1, could you plug in 1 into that? Yes. So do you need to simplify that? No, because I can plug one into that crazy long thing and I will be able to get a value of F prime at one. So I do not have to simplify this F prime. I do not have to distribute everything if I'm just plugging in value. Now, later, when we are setting equations, setting up equations like you did on your quiz, F prime equaling slopes that we're looking for, we might have to simplify it. But when we get there, we'll deal with it. Everybody plug in one. Can you plug in one? Can you get the slope of this crazy F at one? Slopes of the first times the second plus slopes of the second times the first. That's the product. Look at that. Crazy function. Well, the slope at 1 is 2. Cool? Now, typically we do not use the product rule for products of polynomials. You'll typically see it with x's times trig function. x cubed cos x. Now, Recommendation, guys, so that you don't make the mistake of taking the derivative of the x cubed and taking the derivative of the cos x and multiplying them together. It's wrong. Is note that they're x's times x's. You don't have parentheses. Put them there so that you see I have a product of x's times x's. Please find the slope of x cubed cos x at pi. You got it. Oh, good. You got it.
All right, so we talked about this a little bit on the homework, last night's homework. There will be some times where, like, the answer is not a very nice whole number. We have to be okay with that. Just, just trust that you're doing the right thing. If you get an answer of 3 pi squared times negative 1, that's the answer. I have 3 times pi squared times the cosine of pi. So 3 times pi squared times negative. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, it is Apparent on this one on the right. Can we lock it in, please? The one on the right are x's times x's. Definitely use the product rule. Have to. But I'd like to pay attention to g on the left. Three times sine x. Now, you don't have to use the product rule for 3 times sine x, but I'd like you to do it anyways, just to see what would happen if you use the product rule on 3 times sine x. Go. What are the slopes of three? Okay, so that's the slopes of the first times the second. Okay, plus the slopes of the second times the first. Not everything zero. Yeah. You're not gonna get just zero. Nice. Ready. Watch the slope of the first. No, you're right. Zero times the second plus. The slopes of the second, yeah, no, sorry, the top of the cosine. I was wrong. Times the first gives you this. Now, what do you notice? Well, on the left side, the first slope times the second, that's going to go away. It's just going to be zero. But you're still going to have the three cos x. Well, notice, we do not have to use the product rule if it's not a product of x's times x's. You could have just kept the 3 and take the derivative of sine, find the slopes of sine. So the product rule works, but it's not necessary, and it's a lot of extra work that a lot of people make mistakes on, to be honest. So if you don't have x's times x's, don't use the product rule. Just use the constant multiple rule. Okay. That's the product. I could spend time showing you why the derivative of a quotient is not the slopes of the top divided by the slopes of the bottom, but let's just say it doesn't work. You can't just take the slopes of the top and slopes of the bottom and divide them. Newton plugged in a generic quotient into his magical formula, combining a limit and a slope formula, and he developed the quotient rule. And here is the quotient rule. If 
you have a top divided by a bottom. That involve X's. This is important, and we're going to change up some of the notes later in this lesson just so we get over, uh, go over what happens if we don't have X's. This is the quotient rule. Ready? It starts off very similar to the product rule. We will have the slopes of the top times the bottom. Instead of a plus, we'll have a minus. Slopes of the bottom times the top. It would be nice if that's what it was, and we could just end that uh, end there. But we actually have to divide that entire thing by just the bottom, not its slopes, just the bottom squared. Again, Newton discovered this rule. You're just going to use it. Okay? So if I ask you, what is the slope of this at x equals 2? Understand we have a top of x's and a bottom of x's. Please use the quotient rule. It's going to be messy. I'd advise you to use a lot of parentheses. But you don't have to simplify it because you just need to plug in 2 into what you get. So try. I think we get something like... 3 25ths or something like that, negative 3 25ths. Nine and space. Mm -hmm. Good. Just plug in two. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. uh, yes, yeah, Oh. Yeah, negative three twenty fifth is the answer. Where you go? Slopes to the top times the bottom. Minus the slopes to the bottom times the top. This is a creel. Top, bottom. Sure. S prime equals. Yeah, the slopes to the top is one. The bottom. Slopes of the top times the bottom. You get negative three twenty six. You got it? Got it? Well, careful with the simplification, Joe. Nice, Pemberton. Okay. So, what we notice when we do this work is it's not nice to look at. But let me give you some advice. Guys, you all stink at simplifying. Don't simplify if you don't have to. Okay? Don't simplify if you don't have to because you're bad at it. Okay? You can't cross out this x squared plus 1 with 1 of you. No, because of the subtraction. So don't do it. 
If anything, just work in the numerator. Maybe you do a little bit of work in the denominator, but like not unless you really have to. Just plug in two, get your slope. Got it? Because you can. Now we are going to get to the point though where we're gonna have to simplify. Skipping, skipping here. All right, please tell your neighbors. How do you figure out when something has a horizontal tangent? How do you figure out when something has a horizontal tangent? We are looking for when this guy's slopes equal zero. Don't forget to find your equation for your slope. Again, a big mistake made. Students see a complicated equation they immediately just set this equal to zero. No, that'll tell you when your y's equal zero. I want to know when my m's equal zero, so get your m equation first. Ready, set, go. Find your m equation. It's a quotient. To find the m's of this quotient, you have to use the quotient rule. Because it's not a product. Yeah, that's what you have. Yeah. Wanted to simplify this when we don't have to. We have a situation where it's going to help us if we do. We are taking this equation, setting it equal to zero. Now, here's our first experience with fractions equal to zero. Tell me, if you have a fraction that equals zero, where does zero go? In the top, in the bottom, or both? If a fraction equals zero, where would the zero go? Top, bottom, or both? Tell your neighbor. Okay, good. Make sure the bottom doesn't equal zero. Now, we have to pay attention to x equaling one. We don't want x equals one as our answer. Not going to happen, though. What we care about is our top equaling zero. We can essentially ignore the bottom and just set the top equal to zero. How do you solve this equation? Well, I would distribute. I would simplify. Now is the time to simplify your slope equation. You don't care about the bottom. You don't want to distribute the bottom. But I do want to take the 2x multiplied by the x and the negative 1 to get 2x squared minus 2x. I want to multiply the 1 and the x squared. Just make sure it's minus x squared. I get this equation. Combine your like terms. Factor. And you get your x coordinate location. Okay? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, all right. Good question. Will we have to plug it back in to find the why? Well, let's see what the question asks us. Yep. Find the point. I didn't ask you for the x coordinates. I found, I asked you for the point. Sometimes I might ask you for the equations of the tangents. So thank you, Malinagari. We are asked for the point. You need x comma y's. Where do you get y's if you have x's? Plug it back into the original. We plug zero into the original. We plug two into the original. We'll get a point zero zero. We'll get a point two comma four. Thanks. Lock Miller. It's okay. But what? I want you, I put this here, but I want you to get rid of this and replace it with this. Just write down x over x minus 1, and we want to figure out when it's parallel to 4y plus x equals 2. I want you to cross this one out on the bottom of that page, and I want you to replace it with that. Yeah. Cool. All right. You had, this, this is why this lesson is nice. The exact same types of questions show up, okay? The questions you had on your quiz today, you had a question talking about when, where, what x coordinates does this equation be, uh, become parallel to that equation. So this is a repeat of the types of questions. You just have to execute using your quotient rule or your product rule. So what's the key about parallel lines? Tell your neighbors, what's the key thing about parallel lines? The exact same slope. We want to know when this guy's slopes equal this line's slope. So find the slope of that line first. Let's make sure we can do that. All right, now that you know the slope needs to be negative a fourth. Yep, negative a fourth. Please find the slopes of x over x minus 1 and see when they equal negative a fourth. Go. Well, you have a good start. What do you think you need to do? Yep, we're already we're we are at the prime thing. So get the prime thing down because Earl's already there. Okay. Don't copy it down. Give me a break. So I'll show you in a second. I like the thought. Effort is all we ask for. Did you get it, Malagari? No. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, because it's like, this is a challenge. Can we all get here? All right. It is not equal to zero, so we have to pay attention to the top and the bottom. We can't just like cross something out, okay? What are some things that we are instinctually thinking about doing? Don't cross out the x minus one. You are not allowed 
to do this simplification over subtraction. So, simple simplification is what you guys should do. What is another kind of form of simplification that you could do? I wouldn't do that yet. Thank you, Lock Miller. Lock Miller says, can we just simplify the top? Great idea. Everybody simplify just the top. Keep the bottom where it is, but let's simplify the top. Okay, so I distribute the 1. I get x minus 1 minus x. So I write x minus 1 minus x over x minus 1 squared equals negative a fourth. Is there something you could do now? The x's go away. Okay. Everybody should get here. And you got to do this yourself, guys, on your homework. We end up with negative 1 over x minus 1 squared. The x's here and here canceled, left us with just this negative 1. You have two fractions set equal to each other. Tell your neighbors, what could you do? You could cross multiply. What else could you do? Mr. Messner likes to take the opposite of both sides and then essentially set the bottom equal to four because you got ones in the top. Or flip both sides. Either cross multiply, flip both, like just get to this spot where you have 4 equals x minus 1 squared. You will have to practice this on your homework. What's the next step? No, you could though, but like it's easier. You could distribute everything and then subtract 4 and then factor. That is one option. Busey, thank you. You could Square roots both sides. Shh. Now, when you square roots to solve an equation, what do you need, Anderson? A plus or minus. You will add 1 to both positive and negative 2, giving you positive 3 and negative 1. If Sahota or anybody else if you would prefer, instead of squaring, uh, square rooting both sides, if you prefer to square things, subtract the 4 factor to get that, you could do that. That would be longer, right? I agree. All right. On the next page. I actually want you to get rid of this. Because I want you to find the slope of the tangent to these two equations at x equals 2. Here are the two equations. f of x equals x cubed over 3 and g of x equals 3 over x cubed. This is where we're going to finish things up. Just like with the product rule, just because you see a product doesn't mean you have to use the product rule. Just because we see a quotient does not mean we have to use the quotient rule. Could you use the quotient rule? Yes. Will you get the right answer? Yes. It'll just be a lot messier, and you'd have to simplify it. Take the derivatives of these two without using the quotient rule and plug in two. Go. The answer to this is four. The answer to this is negative 9 over 16. 
Yep. You don't have to use the quotient rule, but it works. Ready? If you have x cubed divided by 3, you could either take the derivative of the top and get the answer. The derivative is just x squared. Or, you know what I would do? Is I would write this as one third times x cubed. Now again, it's a product, but you're not going to use the product rule. You leave the one third, the three comes down. The derivative of x cubed over three is just x squared. There's no quotient rule needed, but if you use the quotient rule, this is what you get. The derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. You get 9x squared over 9. Oh, that's just x squared. The quotient rule works. It's just not necessary. What about for this guy? Do you have to use the quotient rule? No. What can you do? Move the x's up. And then take the derivative, okay? So just remember for the future, your homework is all product and quotient rules, but in the future, just because you see a product doesn't mean you have to use the product rule. Just because you see a quotient doesn't mean you have to use the quotient rule. If you have numbers, numbers, x's over x's, x's times x's, that's when we use our rule, okay? We'll see you guys on Thursday. Fun.